All right. So section 4.4, um, uh, pre-calculus 20, we're talking about the quadratic formula. And uh, the quadratic formula is a very, 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 very important formula in, in math. You're going to use this a lot. I don't think that you've been exposed to this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that the quadratic formula is frozen. <laughs> there we go. How's that? Better? The quadratic formula is built upon um, the standard form of a quadratic equation. And what we do in the quadratic formula is we determine a formula, a general formula, for basically solving for the roots of any uh, standard form quadratic equation. So instead of um, completing the square for a specific quadratic equation, like let's say 2x squared minus 5x plus 17 equals 0, instead of completing the square for that one particularly, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to do number 15 from 4.3. Okay, this was a question that was asked to you in 4.3. And this is what's going to launch off the explanation of what the quadratic formula is. So if you were able to do 15, which would have been very challenging for you probably, because what we're doing is we're completing the square on this equation where we don't have actual numbers for A, B, and C. So it is a bit of a complicated solving process. So just out of curiosity, was anyone able to uh, get 15 finished yesterday? Do 15 and kind of get through that? Okay, so nobody did. All right. Well, let's take a look at 15 now because this is actually going to give us the quadratic formula. All right. So if you haven't done number 15, you can put this in the number 15 spot. Uh, this is also how we're going to introduce this next lesson, but this is number 15 from your previous assignment. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square for this equation right here, which means that I want to, first of all, factor an A out of these first two terms, at least these first two terms. So I'm, this is going to be x squared plus b over a x. Now I'm going to complete the square, so I'm going to add something here. I've got a c over here already, and then I'm going to subtract whatever it is that I added on this side over here equals 0. Okay, so already we're into fractions, already we've got letters all over the place, I get it. We can do this. So what is half of b over a? That's going to be b over 2a. When you half a fraction, you just double the denominator. So if we square b over 2a, that's going to be b squared over 4a squared. So again, if we square this, we get b squared over 4 a squared. Okay. Well, that's, that's okay. Now, what do I subtract over here? So what did I actually go ahead and add? I, I put this in, but this is subject to being multiplied by a. So really, what I added was only a b squared over 4a. So I need to subtract b squared over 4a because the a here and the a squared, right? You take one of those a's away. All right, I know what you're thinking. This is crazy. Yes, it's a little crazy. But what we're trying to do, again, is solve for x. Determine the roots by solving for x. We want to go x equals, OK? So I am going to now go ahead and shrink this up here. I'm going to write this trinomial as a square of a binomial, because it's a perfect square now. So this is going to be uh, x squared plus b over 2a, all squared. Uh, thank you, just x, yeah. X plus, you're right, x plus b over 2a, all squared. And then plus c minus b squared over 4a equals 0. Okay, we're getting close here now. We've got x just in one spot, right? Just in one spot. So that's really great. Now I need to isolate for x and then and try and simplify this as much as possible. So let's get everything else over to the other side. I'm going to add a b squared over 4a over here. I'm going to subtract a c from both sides to get rid of those. And then I'm going to divide by a. Okay, let's do that in a second. It's just one, one thing at a time here. So I'm going to be left with a times x plus b over 2a, all squared. 
And then I'm going to have minus c plus b squared over 4a. All right, doesn't matter which order you do this, I could divide both sides by a now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a common denominator over here and combine these into one term. Okay, so I'm going to make this over 4a as well, which means that I need to multiply 4a on the top there too. So we'll make this into just one formula. I'm going to need some more space here for sure. Okay, so what do I have? I have a times x plus b over 2a all squared equals. Now this is all going to be over 4a. That's great. And I'm going to have a negative 4ac plus b squared. I'm going to write that as b squared minus 4ac. All right. I'm sure only a few of you would have been able to manage through this yesterday, so don't feel bad if you didn't. Uh, if I divide both sides by a now to get rid of this a over here, basically I'm multiplying by 1 over a, right? So that becomes an a squared on the bottom over here. So this a on top, I divide both sides by a, I have another a in the denominator over here. So that just becomes 4a squared. Okay, how are we doing here so far? So far good? All right. Now I have to get rid of this squared. How do I do that? I take the square root. Good. What I do to one side, of course, I have to do to the other. And that's going to be a plus or minus, of course, too. So I'm left with x plus b over 2a equals, now, as I simplify this, I want to highlight something here. This 4a squared, that's a perfect square on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is plus or minus, and I'm going to simplify the bottom and just leave this square root on top. So it's going to be b squared minus 4ac. I can't simplify that. But I'm going to write this as just 2a. Okay. Because that square root sign is the same as writing the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom separately. It's the exact same thing. So this can be viewed just like this as well. So that's how I simplified the bottom there. All right, I'm super close, super close. I'm going to subtract b over 2a from both sides now. And I'm going to have negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a on top over 2a. And I need yet a little bit more room before we're done. We'll get this from the textbook. We'll get this just out of the way down here. I'll show you that in a bit. So the last final step here is now to just combine these terms, really. Whoops, these terms here because they have a common denominator, you see? So that becomes, I'll write this in, in red over here now, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a. Oops, I, uh, I don't know if this disappeared or I just didn't write it, but this should be c over here. 4ac all over 2a. So that c is up here. It just didn't get written down. Or it disappeared, how my program's working these days. All right, and that... Now that we have x all by itself, and in terms of, we have it written in terms of a, b, and c. So because we've done this process properly, we've completed the square, we've accounted for everything, notice that I can use the a value, the b value, and the c value from my standard equation, and I can just plug those values in, insert those values in here, 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 here and here, and I will get the solution or the root for x because I have solved for x by completing the square. So this is what the quadratic uh, formula is right here. So I'm gonna, this is uh, a bit of a summary of the quadratic formula right there, and that's how we get it. So from standard form, and again, you kind of need to have 
uh, the quadratic equation in standard form because you need to identify A, B, and C real quick. If it's in vertex form, A, P, and Q, that P and Q aren't in this formula. So it has to be from standard, uh, from the standard formula. And uh, in that case, you use this quadratic formula. This looks a little menacing, um, a little bit difficult to memorize, but I do have uh, a little memory tool that I'll show you a little bit later. It's called the quadratic formula song. And um, I would encourage you to look that one up online if uh, later if you want to remember how to uh, how to memorize the quadratic formula. Okay, we'll take a look at that a bit later. All right, so that's how the quadratic formula comes from standard form 4.3 number 15, the intro to section 4.4. Any questions about that?